SQL is not a term you hear very often in a conference about scalability unless it comes right after the word no. But actually, there have been some very exciting developments in terms of uh, scaling out SQL and scaling out Postgres in particular that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but before we get into the how, there's the question of why. Why do we still care about SQL? Uh, because if we, you know, we've kind of learned that scalable databases are NoSQL databases. And the reason is mostly that things could be simpler. Um, what tends to happen, like, you know, when, when I was in college, we had the LAMP stack, and that was our unit of, of solving web applications. At the time, we, you'd set up a server with Linux, Apache, MySQL, and, and PHP. And uh, we've, we've managed to scale out, you know, I can get 100 operating systems, I can get 100 web servers if I want, I can get 100 application servers, but the SQL database has proven a bit elusive in terms of scaling. So what we've done is we've taken away a lot of the functionality and made that scale. So now we have lots of different databases that are all kind of functionally inhibited, and, um, but we still need to implement different types of applications and features. So now very often, if our data is in, uh, in a NoSQL store and we need to build a new application, we need to deploy some new system. Maybe we need to run some Spark transformation. Maybe we need to separate databases for analytics, uh, text search, key value storage. Whereas if our data was small enough to fit into a SQL database, it could probably take care of most of that. So we'd only have one system to operate and maintain. Uh, because SQL databases are like general purpose data platforms. Uh, they can store data very well, uh, and they can usually process it just inside the database, transform it in different ways, create views, create indexes. Uh, so they're very powerful, but they don't scale. And uh, that's generally a common understanding of SQL databases. They don't scale, so we need other types of databases. But I would argue that the problem is not so much that they don't scale, it's just that they're hard to scale. And when the need for scalability arose, um, like we weren't ready to actually build a scalable SQL, SQL database, so we built simpler things. Uh, but you know, we're a few years further down the line, and we kind of know how to build a scalable SQL database. It's still a lot of implementation work, but uh, kind of fundamentally, we have a theory around it, and, and we're getting closer to actually having viable implementations. So I wanted to dig a bit into, like, how do you actually take a SQL query and distribute it across many servers uh, in a distributed database? And to do that, we kind of have to go back to where SQL came from, which is relational algebra. So relational algebra is the math that deals with uh, sets of tuples. And so there are certain operators, like a projection, which takes out some columns out of all of the tuples, a uh, filter or selection, which takes a subset of the tuples based on some criteria, and joins where we combine sets of tuples based on usually some equality. And these map to you know, familiar SQL keywords. Now, if we wanted to build a distributed SQL database, we have to kind of expand the relational algebra a bit to build the notion of distribution into it. And the main operator we actually need to add uh, to our algebra is the collect operator, sometimes called the gather operator, where, say you have a database where the data is not stored on one machine, but it's divided into chunks, often called shards, and they're distributed across many machines. If I wanted to perform some operation across all of my data, I would have to kind of first pull it into one place, and then I can perform the transformation. And so that's where the, what the collect operator does. Just pull the data into one place, and then I can use other operators on top of that. Now, how is this helpful? Like pulling all the data into one place and then doing some computation doesn't really sound like a very good idea. Um, well, if we think about things as relational algebra, relational algebra gives us certain properties, uh, such as commutativity, like 5 plus 3 equals 3 plus 5. Similarly, a lot of relational operators are commutative. It doesn't really matter whether I first collect all the data in one place and then take out one column, or first on each individual chunk, I take out one column and then collect all of that in the same place. The math doesn't care how you do this, 
But intuitively, we might have a feeling that the plan on the right is, or the picture on the right, is a better way of executing a distributed query because it pushes down more work to um, our distributed cluster, and probably that work can actually be done in parallel, and it minimizes the amount of stuff we pull over the network. So intuitively, that seems like a better plan. Um, like the commutative property, there is also a distributive property, uh, which is like a times x plus y equals a dot x plus a dot y. Um, in relational algebra, this often applies to joins. So I could, to join two distributed tables, I could first collect them in one place and then join the results of that. Or under the right conditions, I could actually first apply the join where the data is stored and then collect the results of that in one place with the latter intuitively being more efficient. Now the conditions uh, under which this holds are uh, typically if my tables are partitioned in the same way, uh, which means that they have the same partition columns, so each shard contains the same set of partition column values, then I can, and, and I'm joining on the partition column, that's when I can make, when this property holds. Also, if one of the tables is just a smaller table that's replicated to all the nodes, and another table is distributed, I can join each chunk, each shard of the distributed table with the replicated table. If neither of those are the case, I would have to reshuffle the data over the network to, ma to match the, uh, the joining column. But all of those things are, so that's another operator that I haven't described here. But all of those things can be, can be done. So let's look at an actual SQL query. Um, so let's say you wanted to have the revenue since the start of the year for some online shop in Asia. And so imagine we have some orders table. Each order table contains a price. So we're summing all the, the price of all the orders. And each order also contains a nation. It doesn't say Asia or Europe, but it contains a nation. And we have a nation table which says this, this country is in, this nation is in Asia, this a nation is in Europe. So then we can do a join between those two tables and, and get the, uh, the sum of the price column. So if, if you send a query like this to a SQL database, um, the first thing that SQL database will do is construct a relational algebra tree with all the operators. Join, filter, project, and finally uh, sum. And this tree is to be executed from bottom to top. And so read the table, perform the join, do the filtering, do the projection, then do the sum. And uh, that will give you the result of the SQL query. Now, to implement a distributed database, the one extra thing we have to add to this plan is the collect node. And there's a very simple way of doing that. Whenever we see a table, which is in some way distributed, we collect it. We collect the shards of the table into one place. So this is a correct way of, a correct plan for a SQL query uh, in a distributed database, but it's not yet very efficient, because I'm still pulling all the data into one place, then joining, then filtering. Um, but so the next step in a SQL database is typically the optimizer, the cost-based optimizer. And what that does, it has some usually pre-configured values for the cost of each operator. And it has some ways of estimating how many rows are left after applying an operator. And based on that cost, it can use the commutativity and distributive properties uh, to kind of reshuffle the plan. And what typically happens in, in a SQL planner is it just generates all possible plans and then picks the one that has the lowest cost. And this usually involves, for example, applying filters before you do a join, because join is expensive. But in the case of the collect operator, usually as much of the other work as possible is pushed down below the collect operator, because collect pulls data over the network, so that's expensive. So our collect goes all the way to the top. Now, uh, now I have a much more efficient execution plan for my SQL query on my distributed database. But how do I actually go about executing that? Well, one observation I can make is that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between SQL queries and relational algebra. So I can convert a SQL query into relational algebra. I can also go back. 
So if I look at my relation of algebra tree, I could take the whole part below the collect node and convert that into a SQL query. And by the way, that part exists kind of many times because the collect node has many children, like one for each shard in the orders table. And also the part above the collect node, I can convert that into a SQL query. OK, so how's, how's this useful? Well, that means that to implement a distributed SQL database, the first thing I need is something that can execute a SQL query on a chunk of data. Now, fortunately, there is a technology for doing that, which is called a SQL database. And so actually, a SQL database can itself act as a building block for a distributed SQL database, where if I had some distributed planner and executor, it could take a query on a distributed table, plan it, push as much work uh, down into the SQL queries as possible, send those SQL queries to the SQL databases that store the chunks, the shards of my data. It, I can probably usually do that in parallel. And then I can gather the results, which in this case is just a bunch of sums. And then finally, uh, my distributed executor only has to sum the sums, which is not a lot of work. And I can give the result to the user. But SQL databases, not many of them actually offer you this ability to just layer on a different planner, except for one of them, uh, Postgres. There is something quite unique about Postgres. And originally, this came from it having a very modular code base. And that's why people have taken the Postgres code base and forked it and created new projects or their own commercial projects, like uh, Redshift is a, is a fork of an earlier version of, of Postgres, for example. And, but in the newer version of Postgres, this has become more uh, commoditized in the extension API. So in Postgres, you can create an extension, which is essentially a shared library that gets loaded into Postgres. And Postgres gives extensions the ability to replace any part of its query execution pipeline, the planner, different stages of execution. There's hooks for uh, transactions. Uh, there's, you can change the way Postgres stores data on disk. Everything is pluggable. Now, that's really nice because that actually allows us to implement this architecture. So uh, Citus is an open source extension that adds, that you add to an existing Postgres server. And then you can create distributed tables. And when you query those tables, it will use this type of logic to distribute the query across shards that are stored in other Postgres servers. And probably the nicest thing about that is that Postgres is kind of an ecosystem of features and extensions. So whereas Citus provides a distribution layer, there's many other extensions and features that you can combine it with. There's PostGIS for geographic information. You could run Python code from your SQL queries or JavaScript or many other languages. And then Postgres offers features like uh, native JSON type sequences and very, very powerful indexes. Did you know in Postgres, you can create an index on a text column uh, which indexes based on regular expressions? So it will use an index when you filter by a regular expression. It's pretty amazing. And what's nice is that all these features combine with each other. There's also different extensions for data distribution and replication. And you can actually combine them in very interesting ways. And so the future of your data architecture might actually just be a big Postgres cluster, which has the extensions to, for distribution, replication, and that you can adapt it to kind of the needs of your applications. And um, what's really interesting is the way in which all these features combine. And Postgres has been under development for 20 years, but it's actually ramping up. So in the next Postgres leads, uh, release, there will be parallel queries. There will be logical replication, where you can just take one table and replicate it to another database. Uh, there will be declarative partitioning. So Postgres development is accelerating. And um, it's going to 
you know, be a major kind of platform, I think, for uh, your, all your data needs. Thank you very much.